echoes of the dramatic Cold War confrontation that had both countries on edge for decades. And just this weekend, a new reminder, a Russian military official hinting the Ukraine crisis may lead them to consider suspending inspections of the Russian nuclear arsenal. That signal means to stop whatever you are doing and get to the nearest safe place fast. That very real threat of nuclear war seems a long time ago, but watching developments this week, it was hard not to think about those bad old days of the Cold War. Russian troops on the march, the U.S. sending fighter jets to Eastern Europe, Vladimir Putin test firing an intercontinental ballistic missile. That ICBM, though unarmed, an especially sharp reminder that America still remains on alert for nuclear war. Across the frozen plains of our country are scattered 450 of them, nuclear-tipped missiles that could destroy the world, still manned every hour of every day. You could drive by this remote site and have no idea there was a nuclear missile silo here, but essentially the nuclear warhead is just 10 feet below me. We travel to missile sites and training facilities to see how the Air Force maintains the nuclear arsenal. Each missile silo is connected, along with nine others, to a control capsule nearby, buried 60 feet underground, behind blast doors Inside five-foot-thick concrete walls, launch officers have their fingers on the nuclear trigger. Step one, launch key inserted. So it would only take four people to launch a nuclear weapon? Yes, ma'am. That's pretty heavy stuff. <laughs> but if the president gave the word, they would be ready. Most of us here think about that pretty much every time we're on alert. The young officers are on alert duty eight times a month, all alone, underground, for 24 hours. Press initiate. It's not the most exciting job in the military. Two, one, key turn. Even though it comes with an unbelievable responsibility. That pressure has been overwhelming for some. The nuclear force has been plagued with scandals, cheating, drugs, alcohol abuse, gambling. But the mission goes on. The system is safe. 24 hours a day. I sleep well at night knowing the people we have out there. I really do. Colonel Steve Ganyard is back with us now. And Steve, what about these threats to not allow nuclear inspections? I, I think this is just more saber rattling by the Russians. I think this is uh, just something to turn up the heat. I, we probably won't be too concerned about it. These, these treaties have, have been on the uh, Cold War downhill for a while. But, but let's talk about the show of force in the region, what right. we could do militarily. Well, John Kerry was, was very careful this week when I was with him really not to talk about any show of force particularly, but... Right. It's really because it's limited. And do we really want to go and rattle saber in the face of the Russians? Uh, the things that we have done, we've put six more F-16s. If we look at the map up in uh, in, uh, in Lithuania, uh, there's a, a, a contingent patrolling the, uh, controlling the Baltics up there. But, oh, by the way, Crimea is in the Black Sea. So we're we're patrolling the wrong sea with our airplanes. It really doesn't do any good. It makes us look, I think, rather foolish to put airplanes a thousand miles away. We can't get ships. We couldn't put an aircraft carrier by treaty uh, into the Black Sea. The Turks aren't going to let us put anything. So we're really, we're, we're rattling a saber so far away that the Russians will never hear it. And, and that's dangerous in itself, isn't it? Is, it is. It is. Thanks, Steve.